So the timing of my session actually might have been better towards the end of the day because what uh, what I'm going to talk about today is, is is a tool called MAMP on the Mac or WAMP on the PC or LAMP on a Linux box. And it's really great for uh, putting into practice all the stuff that you guys are going to be learning about today and wanting to add to your blog without actually doing it in production to, you know, your the internet version of your site. So this allows you to take it, okay, um, it allows you to take your site uh, or build your site on your laptop without any internet access at all. So you can go to the beach and work on your lap on your website and you have all the same features and functions of WordPress uh, locally without having to worry about uh, having a connection. Uh, you can also easily restore your site um, that uh, with it as well. So um, we'll just go through here and um, so, what what is it? What's MAMP? WAMP? Um, you know, it's uh, it, it might sound a little daunting, or it might sound like a retro uh, video game app for those of you that know about MAME, but um, it's it's really quite simple, actually. It's uh, this is what it stands for. You might have heard the term LAMP. Uh, chances are, if you have a hosted uh, website, you're probably on a LAMP stack, and that's what it stands for. It means that your web host is hosting it on a Linux machine or server, uh, you're running Apache as your web server, MySQL as your database, and PHP as your platform. And on the Mac and the Windows, they're similarly named. So um, it's free, and which is really cool, because uh, it's a very simple app to download and install. And uh, I'm going to walk you through this the whole steps uh, today to do that. I'm going to use a Mac, because that's what I have, and that's what I know. And I find that the Mac version of the software is just a little bit more uh, feature rich than the, the Windows version, but the, fundamentally you'll be able to do the same thing. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to uh, run MAMP, we're going to um, install uh, WordPress, and and I, I, what I've done is I've exported my uh, 2010 Olympic website uh, using WordPress's built-in export function, and I'm going to recombobulate it on my laptop. So the, the other nice thing about this method, it's a great way to test your backup functions. Everybody probably has plug, uh, plugins or some process for backing up their website and their content. Have you ever tried to actually rebuild your site except in a crisis situation? So this might be a good way to make sure that your backups are actually properly backing up and that they, they actually work and you can actually rebuild your site while it's calm instead of you know when you're freaking out because the site's down. Same thing, yeah. So um, basically what MAMP is, is just a piece of software that has uh, all the server functions built into it. Um, it has a little control panel. Uh, on, the, on the left up there, you have the, the, um, the Mac version. And on the right, you, it's a little thing in your toolbar or your start menu on, on the Windows side. And, but fundamentally, they're the same. And I'll show you this uh, once I actually have it up and running. So. There's also something called MAMP Pro, which lets you do a little bit more advanced features too. Um, so say, for example, I wanted John.com. Well, like Nadia can't get socialmedia.com, I can't afford John.com, but I can fake it on my laptop. So if I was doing, say, a demo for a client for a domain that we hadn't purchased yet, I can build the site completely tricking very simply just by using a couple of checkboxes here that my laptop thinks that it's actually going out to john.com. So you can build your site, build your links, all that stuff, and it's completely uh, self-contained on your laptop. If you try to go to john.com on anybody else's laptop, it won't work, of course. Um, so you can also set permissions and uh, move your, move your, <laughs> uh, you can move your files around as well, um, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm gonna get out of uh, Keynote here and, uh, show you the, this is the, the, the MAMP um, control panel, and I've got Safari running in the background behind it, and this also is the website that I'm going to rebuild. Um, this website's currently on the internet, uh, 2010.johnbeeler.com, and I'm going to rebuild it in a local version. So if I open start page, this is up here, this is hard to do with one. This mic. So in the in the status bar there, you can see, or the address bar, you can see uh, this is localhost and the colon uh, and then four eights. That's the port that it's running locally on my machine. 
you don't really need to worry about that. That just means that what you're seeing right now is being served up by the MAMP software. It's working. It's showing me the MAMP start page, and it gives me access to everything that I need to do. There we go. So um, what it does, uh, just like when you go and set up your, uh, your website with Bluehost, Dreamhost, whomever you get it set up with, they're going to set, set you up with uh, methods for creating a database, uh, accessing your files, all that type of stuff. And so what this MAMP homepage does is it shows you all, what all those settings are, what the passwords are. And you can see that the username is root, password is root. It's not very safe, those of you secure conscious. But this is really just meant to be a local, localized uh, install. So you don't have to worry about security so much uh, when you're testing. And also, what it does is it creates a folder called htdocs. And you can change that to anything else you want, um, but that's where your website's going to live. So pretend this is like your FTP site where you're going to drop all your files. Uh, so what I've done is I've what I've done is I've downloaded uh, last night's uh, build of the latest uh, WordPress 3.0 beta, beta, and so that's where we're going to install. So just look in here. Here's all the you know the typical files for WordPress. I'm not going to get into that because that's not really that important. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to use um, phpMyAdmin to create a database very simply. And now, again, on your you know a Bluehost site or some other type of hosted service, you're probably going to have a little control panel where you're going to say, I need to create a database. You might even have a one-click install for WordPress. All you really need to do to make this work is just go create a new database. And I'll just call this John to make it easy. And then it's created the database called John. And then I can go back here and actually I'll create a new window. And there's my WordPress homepage. So this is running locally. It's waiting for me to configure it. And then I'll basically have a blog in about 30 seconds. So I'm going to create my configuration file. It's WordPress is telling me what I need to install. Um, and so my database name is John, username is oops, root, exciting stuff, and we're done. So now I can basically create a, create a website, and again this is running under MAMP, and I can call this WordCamp. We'll just call it WordCamp. Um, should always change your admin username. Never use admin, but I'll just use John because it's easy. It's hard to do with one hand. And I'm going to turn off the uh, Google search indexing because it's just a local version anyways. And there we go. So here's the back end for WordPress, which you'll be learning more about today. And what I'm going to do is then go into the tools, import WordPress. Oh, I, you, you, they've changed this in the latest version. You actually have to install a package to get the WordPress importer. So I've done that. And then basically I'm going to browse to the XML file that was created from my um, 2010 uh, site. And this basically has, uh, it's just a big file, it's actually not that big of a file that has all of the, the posts, comments, all the content from my other site. Uh, my other site uses a lot of embedded stuff from Flickr and YouTube and things like that. So that content's still linked and it's still going to show up. So I'll choose that. And the nice thing is it doesn't actually matter the fact that on my site on the internet that my username and passwords are different, my paths are different, all that stuff. This import function will actually handle all that stuff for you. And um, you can actually choose uh, to map to different users. So let's just say you took over a site for somebody and you want to import your site from them. All the stuff's under, you know, under Dwayne. 
and you want to change all the names for the posts to, to John, you can do that. And uh, I can even create a new user here and make all the posts on that during that import that way. And any file attachments as well. You probably want to make sure you have your, your content folder backed up. So if anything you've uploaded, like uh, zip files, PDFs, uh, images, etc. And then it just pulled in all of my content. And just let it chew on that for a bit. And it's all done. Yeah, just backing up your database isn't enough. And um, you really want that XML file because it really has it all in the proper format. And uh, the database is just the raw database. And it's, it's quite geeky to have to go in and try to rebuild a, a WordPress site strictly with a backed up database. So um, I, I'm not aware of one. Um, and I would certainly like one. And I'm actually going to be looking for one today while I'm watching everybody else talk, because um, I have a project that I need to do that on a scripted basis. I do it manually myself after a significant update, but um, some of these files, like if your site gets it to be a couple years old and you have a lot of traffic and a lot of content, these files can be, you know, large downloads. So, um, but anyways, these, this is my, um, my site. I mean, it's got the default uh, WordPress theme and I haven't migrated my theme over, but all my content's here. So this is basically my, you know, sledge hockey post, just like this one here. And the nice thing is it's completely local on my website, or on my laptop. Um, it doesn't have to be a laptop, it can be a, a desktop too. Um, and everything's there, all my comments are here. Um, the tags, categories, everything's there. So now I can go in and I can really break my site. I can go and try those weird plugins like Jay's talking about uh, for backing up things. Sometimes these things don't work. You're using a different version of WordPress. So, uh, you you know, stuff doesn't work. I'd rather break this than break my own site. Um, and so you can try out new themes this way and you can see how it looks without actually, you know, giving your uh, your visitors a headache by switching it every five seconds. Um, and it, it's just a really nice way to have a platform to start playing with a lot of the stuff you're probably going to be hearing more about today. Um, so the, uh, you know, that's that's a simple way of just restoring your backup, proving that that XML file had all your content um, and, and your, uh, your comments. You can see over here that I've got a bunch of, uh, you know, recent comments even. All my archives are there. Everything is just populated. And the nice thing is now I could then, say, go in and fix something on this, export this, and then re-import uh, it into the, onto the internet site, not on my local site. So you got a lot of flexibility, and it takes five minutes to install. Um, the other thing, the other nice benefit on, on a Mac is you can start and stop your servers uh, really easily. They even have a little widget here that lets you start and stop and actually launch your pages and stuff like that. So um, it's a neat little gadget. You can even switch versions of PHP, for example. Uh, it's a common problem people have. They might have an older website that's running an older version of PHP and they want to try it on 5, make sure everything still works. Well, you can just sort of experiment with this very simply. And the other nice thing is, on a Mac at least, the file uh, formamp is actually completely self-contained. It creates a directory in your applications folder, and it basically has everything in that. So you can literally move that folder to another computer, for example, and start up your laptop with that folder on a different machine, and uh, you'll be able to access your stuff there. Like, it's extremely portable, so you can just put it on a flash drive or something. That's a brilliant idea. I'm going to do that. <laughs> David? There, there, there probably is, but I think it would really depend on what tools you're using. Um, it's basically, I think, just like, like Jim on there mentioned with Dropbox, it's just watching folders, right? So um, it just really depends on what you're changing. If you're changing your theme around, then just watch your theme folder. If you're changing your, your content or your database, that's a little bit more involved process, I would think. Does that answer your question? So. That's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you uh, as far as, um, you know, how simple it is. What you do with it is really up to you because there's a lot of flexibility. Um, I use it a lot just to build stuff on the go when I know I don't have internet access and uh, or I need to show something to a client. Um, I can totally bundle up their website, uh, put it on a laptop, go into a room that has no internet access or windows and show them. Uh, everything that I've worked on for them and uh, they quite like that because then they also feel better because their stuff's not on the internet while you're still developing it 
because um, people can find it, you know, depending on what you're developing and how you're how you're doing it. This keeps it all local and keeps it safe and private. Christine. Yeah, I, I think you could probably do something like that. Um, it, probably more along the, the Dropbox type of method, a uh, shared folder that way. Um, I think certainly you could get into some trouble with that. Um, uh, I wouldn't want to be sharing uh, the MAMP installation per se. I'd want to share the, you know, the content. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I work alone, so <laughs> it's not a problem for me. Yeah. And that's why I like it. And a lot of people don't realize that it's, you know, Macs do out of the box have everything you need to do to run WordPress, but it's a little geeky to get it set up. This is literally just a one click download, install, you're done, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, you can install plugins, but I'm just not sure. Um, I think you're, if I understand your question, my, the backup of my site, does it have all those settings? I didn't actually migrate my plugins to this, um, although that's what I would typically do. I have that in a separate folder. I didn't think I'd have enough time to do all that file copying um, today. But um, but yeah, I, I, I think, do, yeah, oh, sorry, I thought Dwayne was going to say something. Um, yeah, no, I think you're right. I think it is. it should be in the database, so it should come across, uh, assuming everything is there and it hasn't been um, started up with something else. The nice thing is with this method, you can basically have a ready-to-go website in a different folder um, at any time, and you can literally just point it to that import file and you're done. Um, so the, the nice thing is that htdocs folder, I could easily create another one and call it WordCamp2 or whatever, and multiple have multiple um, multiple websites in here so for all your different projects. So, and you you could even create like a little dashboard for yourself, so you have it links to all your all your projects and stuff like that right there. And every every site is just a different folder, just like a hosted uh, domain um, service that you'd have. You know, your websites or your blogs are typically in separate folders. You can do the same thing and recreate that. You could easily have all of your all of your sites uh, here, and this could be your development side. And you just you can just point your HT docs, which is what MAMP uses to wherever you develop your stuff. So for example, on, oops, you know, most most Macs have a sites folder. You could just make that um, all, all of your stuff. So it's very simple to do. So I'll just put this back up. Um, they, they also have, uh, in the MAMP Pro version, they have dynamic DNS, which allows you to basically, um, you could literally run it locally and then have it publish your domain, so your laptop would be your 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 production website if you really wanted to, um, and then it would map back to your domain. So if I went to say John.com, it would actually literally come down to my laptop, and I'd be serving the website off this. Actually, for a while, I, when I was developing something uh, on a desktop machine, I actually left the server running all the time, and I would access it remotely and um, through the back door that way. So the this the control panel. Um, it has a number of different options. So you can have it set up so that whenever you turn on your laptop, the server starts up in the background. Um, you can have it uh, um, shut down MAMP when you, uh, when you close it, or you can just leave the servers running and have this, this dialog box up all the time. And just looking at WAMP server on the Mac side, um, or the Windows side, sorry. It looks like uh, as as well they have different versions, and uh, um, you can see on the right hand side there you can actually go in and, and get access directly to all the configuration files directly. The Pro version, basically, what that does is that it gives you uh, a GUI, a graphical interface to those configuration files. It makes it much simpler, and you can actually save and load and save different ones for different uh, clients and configurations, that type of thing. Ariane. I think it depends what you want to do. Um, I typically do, I, I grab a copy when I want to start playing and I have all my content and everything there because then you get a really good sense of whatever changes you're trying to do, how they'll impact your site. Um, it's also a nice backup that you have as well. Um, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a few step process to, to, to replicate your backups all the time that way. It might be easier just to have the file living somewhere on your hard drive and then, you know, add water when you need to. Um, but, uh, I think it really depends on what type of uh, development you're doing with that site. But I, I have 
the XML file of, of all my sites um, were backed up on a regular basis. Um, you just go into uh, you go into WordPress. Oh, I can show it to you. Um, it's just a, an option in the menu. It's under Tools, Export, and you can you can do filters. So let's just say you wanted to only pull out all the stuff you posted and not you know say there's five other bloggers on your site. You can just pull out your stuff. Um, and or specific date ranges because again depending on the size of your site and how long it's been running on WordPress these files can be pretty big I think I have a my blog is about five years old and the last time I dumped it was about 20 megs for all the all the stuff yeah sorry Sorry, this is a WordPress th uh, 3 uh, a beta so but it, it's still in the tools uh, on the sidebar uh, under uh, export. Yep, yep. So if I want to just grab everything, I can just download this file right now, and it creates the file. You know, for this blog that that only lived for a couple of months during the Olympics, it's 363k. So you download it, send it to yourself in Gmail, and let Google archive it for you for a while. Uh, no, that just has your content. You still need to back up your your WP admin fo or the the content folder, which has your themes, your plugins, and any uploads. Uh, yeah, let me. Um, five minutes. Okay. Yeah. It really depends on your uh, on your setup, but basically, like I'm going into the the MAMP install I have here. And under my content folder, um, you'd want to grab basically your WP content folder because that has all of your personal stuff, your themes, your your uploads, your videos, um, any plugins, and um, just back up your WP content folder um, manually. I only back it up when I actually make a change to it, which isn't that often because everything's in the database, which gets backed up on an hourly basis. Any other questions? Yeah, there's a number of different database emailing scheduler type plugin type things. Um, and when you just just go to the the plugin database um, on on WordPress, and oops, this just has the stock. So I'll hit add new, and then just you know type backup. Which was the one that you had? It was DB Manager. Okay. Yeah, so there's a number of different ones here. The one I use is very similar to what you described. It might even be the same one, um, where it uh, lets you specify a time. You can um, it, choose which database uh, tables to, to pull into it, and then I just have my Gmail filling up with uh, database backups. Uh, WP DB Manager. As far as apps go, I, I haven't heard of any of them, but honestly, I haven't really looked. Um, I heard about this one a couple years ago, and I've been using it ever since. Um, and it really is simple. Um, and I, one of the things I like about it, for especially for people like a, at a WordCamp, is even if you're not very technical, it's fairly straightforward, and uh, the website is pretty well documented on how to get it running. And certainly, if anyone wants to download it today and wants help setting it up, I'll, I'll be happy to help you. I can't remember the, the 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 subject line that comes with the email, um, but I think you can. I think it, it it says you know your domain name or or whatever the site is. So you'll you will separate that way, and just you can send yourself one as a test, and you go into your your mail client and just set some rules up to how you want to forward it, you manage it. You can have it go into a folder saying, okay, well, blog A goes there, blog B goes here, um, and uh, I, I believe the domain name that it, that it's sent from. Uh, is in the subject line, yeah, and it, it comes from your 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 admin email account that you have on on, on WordPress. So, in my case, it'd be coming from John at John Beeler, um, and uh, you you can tell pretty quickly. Are we for time? All right. Thanks, everybody.